So this is another one of those movies where you guys have been requesting that I review this movie for a really long time. So this is it. I'm finally doing it. So right at the beginning of this movie, you'll see George Lucas's name pop up. And if you've never heard about how bad this movie is before, you might think, okay, this should be interesting, let's give this thing a shot. Keep in mind, this came out only a few years after Return of the Jedi, long before George shot out episode one. So his reputation was still somewhat intact amongst Star Wars fanboys such as myself. Also, I have to mention that Leah Thompson is in this movie. And to be completely honest, I've always kind of had kind of a thing for her ever since Back to the Future and then well, Caroline in the City kind of confirmed it. So I'll give the movie some good movie points for her. Trust me, it's going to need it. Also, I should mention, if you didn't know, this movie is actually based on the Marvel comic book and was one of the first Marvel comic book movies. I say one of the first because there was actually a Captain America serial that was made back in the 1940s. I don't know if you really want to count that. Another interesting point is that this movie was actually intended to be an animated film when they first started, but they had to make it a live action movie. And apparently according to the Wikipedia page, which as we all know is always complete fact, they had to do this because of a contractual obligation, which is weird. I can't imagine that in the con in the contract. You have to make this movie, but God damn it, Howard has to be real. It's actually one of the big things in the movie that I think makes it so bad. It's not the only thing, but it's definitely one of them. I don't know what happened there with that contract, but whoever wrote that, probably fired. So the movie starts off on the uh, duck world, I guess, and Howard's just chilling in his living room until he gets sucked outside. Causes a lot of chaos and... Are those duck tits? I honestly don't know how I feel about this. I mean, should I laugh? Or should I be weirdly aroused? So Howard gets sucked out into space and starts flying around the galaxy. Don't know how you would survive this, but whatever. Anyways, he lands on Earth in some alley somewhere. Uh-oh, she's tapping her heel. You know, she means business. I mean, you can always tell which street gangs are the toughest. Usually by how much makeup they put on. Oh yeah, this music is crazy. Better put the band behind a fence so that the crowd doesn't rush the stage. Oh no, here comes the Satan sluts. Jeez, I hate to break it to you, lady, but I'd be willing to bet that even Satan wouldn't want to fuck you. So Leah gets roughed up by some punks, and here's where we get our first taste of the brilliant dialogue. That's it. No more Mr. Ah. Nice Duck. Do you like to see what I see? A talking duck? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've been doing too much toot. Yeah, when I get high on toot, I just flip out completely. Don't know what's gonna happen when I'm on toot. I'm on toot right now. There's usually blood and dead hookers and some kind of goat sacrifice the next day. So Leah takes Howard back to her apartment in a scene that's just filled with awkwardness and a wallet full of puns and it's kind of clever for a few seconds i mean you got marshington dc instead of washington dc blooming ducks instead of bloomingdales and money where george washington has a duck bill and then she finds howard's tiny duck condom so the next day leah decides to hide howard inside of a garbage bag because you know having a conversation with a pile of trash that won't seem weird at all at this point you think Hey, well, at least we got Tim Robbins in this movie. But then we get this. Nice ducky. Me, Phil. You, Howard. We be friends. Ugh. So it turns out that Tim isn't really a scientist. He's just a lab assistant and has no idea how to get Howard home. Which is weird, I thought Leah knew him. That's why she went to him in the first place. Howard gets really pissed and tells everyone to screw off. And then he tells Leah that he doesn't need any of her help. Really? She took you in, gave you a place to stay, and is doing her best to help you find your way home, and you tell her just to go away? You'd think that if you were stranded on a weird planet with no idea how you got there or how to get home, you'd probably cling to anyone who is willing to help you 
for as long as possible. So Howard goes out to find a job, and this is another thing that doesn't really make any sense. Some people are completely terrified by his appearance while other people just treat him like a regular person. Well, on the other hand, that is quite a convincing disguise. I mean, I can see why anybody would just mistake him for a young child with hair all over his body, webbed feet, and a duck bill for a mouth, or this scene. First, everyone on the bus is terrified of him, and now they're all laughing at him? Once again, Leah's band is giving quite the hardcore performance. Good thing there's that fence there so that the band doesn't get hit from all the thrashing. And then things get really weird when Howard gets turned on by Leah, and we have this scene that flirts with bestiality. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere, thank God, but it just gets really uncomfortable watching Leah trying to seduce a duck. So with the help of Jeffrey Jones, they figure out how Howard got there, and it's through some kind of laser telescope thing that just... It, it doesn't matter. All you need to know is they're gonna try to get him back home by reversing it. Then they have this really touching moment together because he's leaving, which quite honestly doesn't really make any sense. I mean, they haven't really spent that much time together. Up until this point, the whole movie has pretty much been Leah finding him, Leah taking him home, Leah taking him to Tim Robbins, Howard freaks out on her and leaves, and then later finds her at a bar and sleeps over again. That's it. It's not like they've been on all these crazy adventures together, which you would expect in this type of movie, and probably would have made it a better movie. There's so much of this movie that could have been spent on him trying to get used to the way society is on Earth and whatnot. It would have made for an interesting movie, but they never really explored that fully. So then they all go to the lab with the laser, and then this happens. again it was terrible we have no right to tamper with the universe Ooh. now you'd think that seeing this would be kind of upsetting i mean it comes out of nowhere but instead this is the reaction that we get from howard this does not bode well really i mean this is his only hope at getting home so you'd think his reaction would be a little bit more urgent and intense considering that by the looks of things, it's not going so well. And what about this guy? It's quite obvious that he's in need of some medical attention. Should we get him any help? No, we'll just let him take care of himself. Something happens and the cops decide to arrest Howard. So Howard's plan for escape is to distract the cop by throwing a cigar in the garbage can. And who would retrieve something from a receptacle like this? Diving all the way in? It makes no sense at all. For example. <sighs> Think I'll have some eggs. There's oh, way in the back. So they find Jeffrey Jones and he's obviously injured because he keeps acting like he's about to just keel over at any second and he helps them escape in his car. Just wondering as to why you would let someone like this behind the wheel. I mean, if it was me in this situation, I would probably make the suggestion, hey, maybe I should drive. So they end up in this, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say multicultural diner and Jeffrey Jones starts talking about how his body has been taken over by this evil alien. Anyways, after a bunch of puns and shit, Seabass and his friends come over and start harassing them and they steal the key card to the laser thing. So of course there's this stupid fight sequence, but it's not really a fight sequence, it's just a bunch of stupid crap like people jumping into pies over and over again. I guess the most annoying part about this scene is that while everyone is cracking bad jokes and making puns, no one's really taking notice to the fact that, hey, this guy over here is talking about ending the world. But like everything else in this movie, it's accompanied with bad jokes and puns, which makes it incredibly painful to sit through. And now the whole restaurant has turned into this angry mob that wants to murder Howard? What? Of course, the evil overlord fucks everyone up and gets the key card. This is all, of course, accompanied by, once again, a ton of bad jokes. 
I mean, why would you expect any less? Anyways, Howard and Tim Robbins get away from the police in this giant flying machine because, you know, why not? Of course, the evil alien has kidnapped Leah and tied her up in these really loose ropes that look like she can just get out of at any minute. And, of course she does. Wow, didn't see that coming. Anyways, in the end, Howard destroys the evil alien by shooting it with this laser gun. And for some reason, he thinks he's Tarzan now. Yeah! Oh! One minute to arrive. Then he uses the laser gun to destroy the laser telescope thing to make sure that no more evil aliens can come to Earth, even though this means that he has no way of getting home now. And that's it. He's just stuck here on Earth now. And Leah's band makes this song about him that sounds completely terrible. Somehow Howard knows how to play the guitar in the end. I don't know, it's not like it really matters now. Anything goes at this point. Now I have to say that this movie was actually worse than I thought it was going to be. The most confusing point, of course, being who is this movie aimed towards? Kids? Because I would say there's definitely some moments in here that completely contradict that. <laughs> Don't mind me! <laughs> now I think one of the main problems with the movie was of course making it a live action. Because I think there were still a lot of other flaws that prevented it from being a good movie, such as the script. Very few times have I encountered a movie with so many bad jokes and puns strung together that it actually made me feel exhausted just to watch. kind of sucks because it's getting really hot in Ontario right now and of course I have to do this show without my air conditioner on because it makes noise and I'm under all these lights which explains why I'm sweating and why I'm doing this review without any pants I'm serious see